Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I have deep concerns about this nominee, and I would note we have talked at length in this committee about the nature of Joe Biden's judicial nominees. He is consistently seeking people who are extreme, who are partisans, and who are out of the mainstream. Today, we are voting on several judges that, whose records, quite frankly, are extraordinary. And it is consistently disappointing that no matter what a judge has done, a judicial nominee has done, no matter how extreme their record, the Democrats on this committee will vote in favor of those nominees. Mr. Mangi, served for years on the Board of Advisors of a radical and anti-Semitic law center at Rutgers. It was called the Center for Security, Race, and Rights. That center hosted an event on the 20th anniversary of September 11th, challenging the, quote, narrative regarding that gruesome terror attack. The existing narrative concerning 9-11, to the extent that there is one, is that vicious terrorists launched a cowardly attack and killed thousands of American civilians. Call me crazy, I don't think that's a narrative that needs to be rethought. It's pretty accurate in terms of what happened, but apparently the center did not think so. The panel of speakers at the event included, firstly, an actual terrorist. I'm not joking. Sami al-Aryan, who in 2006 was convicted of conspiracy to contribute services or benefits to a terrorist organization, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, spoke on this 9-11 panel. The panel also featured Hatem Bazian, who explicitly called for intifada in the United States. That's not rumor or innuendo, it's on video, and it's undisputed. Is that a mainstream position? Apparently Senate Democrats think it is to have another October 7th here in the United States. Are my Democratic colleagues okay with this? Or do they simply believe the press will not report anything, no matter how extreme these nominees are, so they can be safe? This event also featured Professor Rabab Abdul Hadi, who had hosted her own events in San Francisco, ones that platformed and featured an actual terrorist and plane hijacker Leela Khaled. Mr. Mangi, who was on the advisory board of this center, while all of this was transpiring. Now, if this were just a single isolated event, maybe it would be a different story. But instead, the opposite is true. This sort of radical political programming was at the very core of this organization Mr. Mangi was involved in. In May of 2021, the center held an event called, quote, the 100 Years War on Palestine Teach-In a Jewish news syndicate opinion piece entitled, quote, Hamas apologists slander Israel at Rutgers teach-in, described the event as, quote, terrorist whitewashing webinar. Among other things, speakers at the event explained that, quote, Israel has succeeded in painting Palestinian resistance as terror. Understand the Democrat senators on this committee are perfectly fine with that. They don't have a problem with that at all because they're getting ready to vote for a judge who served on the advisory board and saw event after event after event and didn't see anything he disagreed with because he kept serving there. On September 2022, the center held another event entitled, quote, Consistent Partiality, U.S. Foreign Policy on Palestine, Israel. One of the speakers, Peter Beinart, stated, quote, There's a deep identification among many conservative white American Christians with Israel. And it partly comes from the fact that Israel, like the United States, is a settler colonial state. The Democrats on this committee agree with that? Apparently, they're willing to vote for judges that do. On May 29th, 2021, the director of the center, Professor Sahar Aziz, signed a letter which was posted on the center's website, which read, quote, a ceasefire does not end the colonial conditions of structural violence and inequality that Palestinians live under. The letter went on, quote, the Palestinian rights to freedom, security in their homes, to return, self-determination, and to be free of violent occupation are well established under international law. 
the language of both-sidedness, of timeless or religious conflict with moments of escalation, erases the military, economic, media, and diplomatic power that Israel, an occupying force, has over Palestine. The most shocking part of this statement reads, quote, we are in awe of the Palestinian struggle to resist violent occupation, removal, and erasure, and the expansion of Israeli settler colonialism. Well, after October 7th, are Senate Democrats in awe of that? We'll find out with their vote in a moment. I asked Mr. Angie. Did he agree with these statements? Specifically, did he agree or disagree with Professor Aziz? And I have to say, his, his answer was reminiscent of Sergeant Schultz and Hogan's Heroes. I know nothing! Who's she again? I asked him, did he agree with Professor Aziz's statement, whether Israel was an occupying force in Palestine? And he refused to answer. He said... It was too complex. Let that sink in for a minute. I have to say, I kind of wondered if he was auditioning to be president of Harvard. He just needs context to know whether the Hamas terrorist or the IDF are more problematic. He had the opportunity to denounce this event, to denounce these statements, to denounce this center, and he didn't do it. He just said, nope, I don't know anything about it. I don't know anything about it. Nope, too complex. Oh, I, I have no idea. I have no views at all. He also tried to give this committee the impression that his connection with the center was extremely limited. What center? No, no, I was just on an advisory board. I, don't, I, I have no idea what they're doing. Mind you, look, it's possible. I don't know, but it's possible he didn't know about this event celebrating terrorists on 9-11. It's possible he didn't know about the event before it happened, but you know what he didn't do? He didn't resign after it happened. He didn't say, whoa, whoa, I didn't know this is what you guys were doing. Nope, nope, he was perfectly fine. And by the way, they kept on doing these events over and over and over again. But he wasn't just on the advisory board. He was a donor. He gave $6,500 of his own money, wrote it to the center. But that's not it. He didn't just give his own money. He also went to his law firm, Patterson Belknap, to help get the center an additional 13000 So nearly twenty grand. And mind you, what Mr. Mangi wants to tell this committee is, yeah, I helped raise nearly twenty grand. I gave 6500 myself. I was on the advisory board. But you can't blame me for anything. And mind you, he could have done what some of Biden's nominees do which is take their record and run away from it, denounce it, say I was mistaken, I was young. No, he didn't say any of that. Instead, he just said it's too complex, he can't give an opinion. He didn't denounce any of this. And by the way, who recruited Mr. Mangi to the center? That would be the director, Sahar Aziz, the same woman who described Israel as an occupying force, quote-unquote, that engages in, quote, settler colonialism. The Jewish Federation of Greater, Met Greater Metro West New Jersey has stated that Aziz, quote, regularly and consistently promoted vile anti-Semitic propaganda. The Senate Democrats agree with that? Quote, vile Semitic anti, uh, vile anti-Semitic propaganda? Well, we're gonna find out, and there's no surprise. Senate Democrats of the Russian Polar Bureau. Da, da, that's how you vote no matter how extreme the nominee. I understand when your party's in power, it's expected that you vote for most of your president's judicial nominees. Many of us on the committee were here all four years Donald Trump was president. We had a number of nominees. I voted for most of those nominees. I understand that. I'm not expecting Democrats to suddenly start voting against a ton of Democrat nominees. But Joe Biden and this White House are seeking out radicals. And repeatedly, 
When, there were president, when President Trump made nominees who we deemed outside the mainstream, we said, no, that's not going to cut it. And we actually exercised advice and consent, the constitutional authority of the Senate. I do not understand why Senate Democrats believe they have no responsibility and why they're willing to rubber stamp these nominees. But I would urge every member of this committee to vote against this nomination.